people. We're going to do a deeper love with, with those. We're going to start another one. We'll start another in um, oil warming. And we'll go over the recipe in a minute. But with, to make a, a, a salve, you use a, a, for a cup of infused oil, use one ounce of beeswax. We're gonna do two cups at a time, because like I said, we're batching it. We're gonna do a little bit larger quantities. Um, so we're gonna do two cups, so that would be two ounces of beeswax. The beeswax that we're using tonight, uh, that Jen was able to get. Beeswax either comes in the little bits like this, they call it pastilles, um, or you can get it in the blocks, like the blocks of beeswax. And then beeswax either comes with that kind of honey color, the natural, or um, so it'd be like the pellets can either be yellowish or these white. These mean they've been through one more, what do you call it, one more filtering. And um, they say they're cosmetic grade. So you could use either. And to use these, it's two tablespoons of beeswax for one ounce. So because we need two ounces for two cups, we're gonna use four tablespoons of the little beeswax pellets. So one, two, three, four. And we're gonna melt the beeswax first. So what, um, what we have here is we've created, a, I guess you call it a poor man's double boiler, but it works real well. So we've got a hot plate, we've got a, a pan of water, about halfway filled with water. And we're gonna use this four cup measuring cup as a, like a double boiler system. So we're gonna um, heat our water at a simmer. We're gonna set the beeswax in it, in the cup. Not boiling hard enough because we don't want the water to bounce into the beeswax or anything. So we're just gonna um, let the wax melt and then we're gonna add two cups of our uh, infused oil to it. We'll use this one first and then this one should be ready by the time we get to that. While we're waiting for that, I think let's go look at the recipes because everybody doesn't have their handout ahead of time. And, and I'm slowly sending them to you, so okay. bear with me. It's always nice in a regular class where you can do your notes on your handout and everything, but. When anyone gets confused, please ask questions. Um, this is the basic infused oil recipe, okay? This is what we just did. We did the one part calendula and the two parts of olive oil. But you could use any herb and any carrier oil, depending what your intention is, what herb you'd use. So you mix them in a jar, leave it for one to two weeks or in a warm crock pot for eight or more hours. So that's just the basic infused oil recipe. Then with that infused oil is how we're gonna make our salves. So here's the basic healing salve recipe. We're gonna use two ounce tins. And to make a salve, you would use one cup of your infused oil, whatever kind you made, one ounce of beeswax. And for each two ounce tin, you would use 20 to 24 drops of essential oil. Now what essential oil you would use would depend what your intention is for that salve, you know, because they all have different properties and, and different healing qualities. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes too. So for each two ounce tin, you would need 20 to 24 drops and that would make a 2% solution. That is what is considered safe for adults. So if you're gonna make this for Make something for a child, you probably go down to 1% for a, uh, I'd say like a toddler under three years, you probably go to a half a percent. So, so that would be like 10 yeah, drops? I'd go like 10 drops if you were doing it for, for a child and maybe uh, five if you were doing it for Say a they have um, eczema or something like that, mm -hmm. or um, some get rashes mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah, I just cut okay. it down a little bit. Sometimes this is fine, like if you used it and, and it depends on your essential oils. Like lavender is a really safe oil. It's good for skin and um, you don't hear too many people being allergic to it. 
Well, when you get something like we're going to be talking about eucalyptus in a minute, and some people even say don't use it with real young kids. But I, I grew up personally, I grew up with um, Vicks Vapor Rub, and that's eucalyptus oil in there. And I didn't die or anybody in my generation from the eucalyptus, no. but there was like in, the, in that, there's a book that gives every possible allergy, you know, pregnant women, you know, all the kinds of warnings about it. And there was one case somewhere, like 100,000, where a child had some kind of allergic reaction to eucalyptus. So they say, be careful. So um, what you can do, I'm just kind of jumping ahead a little bit. If you wanted to do the vapor rub for a child, I would suggest instead of using the eucalyptus in it, I would use cedarwood because cedarwood has very similar properties, even smells, you know, woody, um, but it would be really safe for kids. So again, you just kind of research what you want to, what your intention for that particular product is, and then decide what would work best for you and your family. So, okay, from the basic healing salve recipe, we're gonna branch off and we're gonna make two different salves tonight for two different uses. The first one we're gonna do is a vapor rub. And this would be on the idea of Vicks vapor rub, except that it doesn't have any petroleum products in it, it's all natural. Um, and we're gonna make a larger batch too. So for each cup of the infused, and this is the cedar and the juniper berries that is going already warming up over there for us. And it's gonna have the beeswax. And then um, vitamin E is optional. We're gonna add some that is like a preservative in your recipes. If you're not gonna use it really fast, it's always good to put, put that in it. Although a lot of your essential oils are also preservatives in that they're antibacterial, antimicrobial, uh, and so on. So that they kind of prevent stuff from growing too. Ladies, do any of you guys have questions yet? No, but I wish I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I wish you were too. It's I so miss, much easier. <laughs> I'm missing everybody. I uh, totally understand. <laughs> um, when Jen gets you sent your hand out, though, I, I think it'll, it'll kind of gel what we're talking about and then what you see and everything. Um, so the first one we're going to do is a vapor rub, but we're going to double the recipe because we're going to make a double batch. But anyway, so then the essential oils that are in the vapor rub are very similar to what's in the Vicks vapor rub. Okay, there's eucalyptus, peppermint, and camphor essential oils. Remember, those are the concentrated oils that come in the little bottles. And for a two ounce tin, remember we did over here, 20 to 24 drops for a two ounce tin. So that 24 drops will be three eighths or 24. So we use equal amounts of each of these. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, if you would rather have more peppermint than eucalyptus, that's okay, you know. Um, you could sub substitute them, but in a minute we'll go over some of the properties of these and why they were chosen. Um, so that's, that's one product we're gonna be making. The other one is a skin salve. And this is a skin salve that, oh, I have had such wonderful uh, input on this being very healing. And especially lately, it's gone to some women who are essential workers and they're washing their hands and constantly using hand sanitizer in their jobs. And their hands got really raw, blistery, kind of eczema type of things, weepy, weepy kind of rashes from so much chemicals and my my um, stepdaughter's one and she used this overnight and put like uh, woven gloves on overnight and it cleared up the redness was out and the, it was it, just overnight it was incredible she calls it the miracle salve because mm -hmm. it really worked um and, and a few others, but it's just a really good skin salve. And it's also good for eczema, for um, uh, psoriasis, anything with the skin, rashes, bug bites even, you know, where um, it'll kind of like take this, the itch away, hives, you know, anything, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, even on um, scrapes, like skinned knees and things like that. This is your skin salve for anything skin. Um, Damn. The, yeah, 
the palm of my hands um, twice this year. The skin got very hard and then it started peeling off. Mm -hmm. and, and the whole palm of my hand and then uh, the tip of a couple of my fingers. So that would be nice to try to see if that would help to um, heal that because Definitely. basically I have to live through it until it decides that it's going to get better, you know. Yeah. Mary, was it diagnosed as eczema? No, I didn't go to the doctor. Yeah, no, it sounds right. kind of like it, but this salve would, will help with anything on skin. Okay. Do you want to tell your daughter, Jen? Yeah, Mary, um, my daughter, she suffers from eczema, and um, of course, she's a CNA, and so Deb made this, and I said, um, can I get a little tin? And so my daughter, uh -huh. you know, she's she's up for anything because she she has to make appointments to see the dermatologist, and you know it's this kind of a process. So she said, "I'll give it a try," and her too. She tried it, and um, she put um, gloves on, you know, to sleep at night because you know she didn't want it all over, you know, all over the place the yeah. next morning, and then just constantly, constantly using it. Um, she's she's you know she doesn't have the cracked hands and cracked fingers and you know from washing her hands so consistently uh -huh. but um i i she she tells others and she's kind of shared um a little bit with her um co-workers and they all believe in it too so wow um, neat the miracle sab hey <laughs> <laughs> well good it's worth a try, Mary. It may not work for everybody, but it's worked for everyone who's tried it so far. Uh, my grandson was getting really bad eczema and we never could figure out the source, you know, if it was something in his diet or something in the environment. But when she slathered, slathered the uh, skin salve on, it took the itch away and he was able to sleep. It didn't oh. totally get rid of the eczema. It finally went away on its own and we don't know what it was, but when he was suffering from his little neck, he would just be scratching away and, and uh, it would just constantly bother him. Um, it, it took the symptoms, the worst of the symptoms away. So I, I really believe it. And well, we're, let's just talk about why these things, why I kind of picked them. Cause I've been studying, you know, taking some herbalism classes and I'm no physician, so don't, you know, but um, <laughs> you know, you just read about the properties of these plants. And I think it's just incredible. The creator's given us this, Here just this garden around us, you know, with wild things that are, that are healthy for us. And, and we're here long before pharmacies existed. Um, anyway, so the reason, and on the handout, on the bottom of the handout, it has herb properties for the things that we're using tonight, the plants, and then the essential oil properties. And it's only a, a touch of the properties of these things, but they're the things that we, I was kind of honing in on for, for these products. So looking at the, if you have your, your list yet, or you'll be getting it, um, calendula, okay, that's a, it's a flower, it's in the marigold family. It's um, antiviral, it's anti-inflammatory, which means it takes down swelling uh, and it has wound healing properties. So in and of itself, if you had nothing but calendula oil, it would probably help any skin condition. Wow. But with it, we did lemon balm and lemon balm. It's relaxing. It makes a great tea, by the way, if you ever get the dried herb, it's anti-anxiety. Anti it's good topically for skin and it's particularly useful on herpes you like cold sores. Mm, there's, okay. there's been reports how good it is for that. So you can like make a lemon balm, lip, lip balm. balm. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yep. Um, so, so both of those plants have really good skin qualities, just that alone infused in the oil before we even do the other stuff, okay? So then we do the beeswax, which um, gives it the stiffness in your salve so that you, it's not just liquid, it's got some body to it when you spread it, but it'll melt at skin temperature. We add a little bit of vitamin E, and we all know that vitamin E has been known to be good for skin for forever, but it's also preservative. Now, I, I picked, and again, you could mix and match if you know more about essential oils than I do, Mary, because you used to um, deal with them. But lavender is good for sleep, healing for the skin, it's good for headaches, and it's very balancing. But 
again, it's good for skin. Tea tree, mm -hmm. um, it's good for respiratory, it's good for skin, particularly cold sores and acne. And it's antimicrobial and it's a good like deodorizer. So again, really good skin uh, properties. Geranium, this was not one of the common ones so much, but listen to this, wound healing reduces acne, eczema and psoriasis. Man, that's a powerhouse. <laughs> Geranium, essential oil. And then the last one is thyme. And that one boosts immunity, it's antifungal. It's good for respiratory, it fights infection. Um, so again, all of these, and there's even more. There's other ones that are good for skin too, but um, I figure four is enough. If you start to add too many essential oils, you don't have enough of each one, I think, to, to really do the job. Um, so again, you've got your 24, 20 to 24 drops. So I'm just doing equal amount, six drops of each. I probably should have put five because when you go to do it, it's real hard to just cut it off at five drops. It's always like an extra one anyway. So, but, um, but that, so that was designed by reading up on the different properties of the essential oils and the plants. And uh, so anyway, so when we, when we do this one, we'll be doubling the recipe from one cup of the infused oil to two cups. And so then everything's gonna double. And just to, just to think about it, we did the essential oils, 20 to 24 drops per two ounce tin. But if we were trying to count those for every tin, it would start to get solid. So we're gonna put them into the, as soon as the oil comes out of the double boiler, we're gonna let it cool a little bit and then add all those essential oils as one big blob. So ahead of time, we'll measure out like the 50 drops of each of those things. And that's going to make- Each of those essential oils. Okay. And that will make, um, it'll be approximately nine tins. Because two cups is 16 ounces and the two ounces of beeswax, I think it's about 18 ounces or nine tins. And so that would be approximately 200 drops of essential oil. Since we get four oils, it's just simpler to go 50 each. Oh, okay. Because you're doubling it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then like this one, which we're gonna do next, that's gonna be the first one we do. So overall, mm -hmm. when you do the essential oils, um, I guess what I'm noticing is it's kind of okay to at least have four essential oils to your mix, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Deb, I have a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't done that oil since. You probably knew that I did for dabbled a little bit there, but mm -hmm. how long do they? Um, how long is their shelf life, if lack for of a better term for oh, that? That's a real good question, Mary. Um, they're good for one to two years at least if they're kept out of light and mm -hmm. in a um, in the amber bottles, which they usually come in the good companies. Mm -hmm sell them in the amber bottle so that prevents light. So as long as you're not leaving them in a sunny window or something like that, you have them in a dark cupboard or something and they're um, cool. That's the other thing is heat they react to. Um, some people store them in the fridge. I don't, I just have mine in a bedroom. Um, we don't keep the temperature real high in there and I have them in a shelf behind a um, towel like covering them. So they're good for at least two years, I'd say. And there's some that are good for three or four. Okay. And it depends and you on the oil. Of mine, though. <laughs> I've had mine <laughs> for years. So. Um, but you know what, Mary? You might not want to use them like for a skin salve, but you could use them like in a diffuser. Uh -huh. Or um, the other thing is if you have some that might be not as potent, you could uh -huh. use them for some of the uh, like cleaners, household cleaners or toilet bombs or things like that, where you're not actually putting them on your skin, but you could use yeah. them as cleaning products. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like a aromatherapy. Yeah. yeah. Ra rather than waste them because they were yeah. expensive. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I, I, oh. okay. I guess I won't be interrupting too much, but. Oh, if no, you could that's talk. good because when you ask, when you ask a question that that's something other people might be thinking of too, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah, that's a real good question is how long they last because it's easy to let them kind of get ahead, especially if you get go full heartedly into collecting them, huh, Mary? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then um, 
<laughs> and then um the dry dry herbs how long do you what's the shelf like so i'm gonna show you ladies um so i've been on a shopping kick <laughs> excuse my um <laughs> disorder here but um so this is like echinacea termic um these are like all the herbs we're gonna eventually use for um further classes and so forth but um deb what is the shelf life okay most of the dried herbs, like what I'm using, this is a pound of calendula, which the thing that's nice is most of the herb companies, you have a choice of buying four ounces or eight ounces, you know, half a pound, or this is a pound. Mm -hmm. So if you're really into it, you might use this. They say at least a year. And so I think of it as, you know, if you're going to collect something, go out in the spring and collect your dandelions, you do that once a year, right? Because then they're yeah. gone. So if you could use your dandelions over the winter, come spring, you replenish and you dry a new supply. So that would ensure that you've always got new, nothing would be more than a year old. However, the companies do say that if you keep them out of light and dry, they're good for a couple of years. Okay. You know, they will start to degrade. They wouldn't, it wouldn't poison you. You just might not get all the benefits yeah. of the herb. Are we coming back over here? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. And uh, so, Right, so here is our, this is the infused oil that's already mixed with the beeswax and it's all melted together because you want to have it all liquid. Otherwise, if those little pellets were still floating in there, you'd have a lumpy salve. So this is the one that was made with the flat cedar western cedar and the juniper berries and then the wax is in it and then in a we're going to let it cool for just a little bit but before it starts to harden we're going to add the essential oils the essential oils that we're going to add are the three that like vix vapor rub is made from eucalyptus and camphor and peppermint and remember we we needed 50 50 drops of each to do two cups. I did it ahead of time, so I wasn't sitting here on camera counting. <laughs> so I've got it ready to go. And I was keeping it covered because essential oils, if you leave the covers off of the bottles or leave it, it evaporates. And to me, that's wasteful. So whenever you use your essential, oil, essential oils, be sure to cap them. Uh, and the reason we're using these three and probably why the VIX company uses them also. <laughs> Eucalyptus, okay, it's good for respiratory health, it's antimicrobial, and it reduces inflammation. The uh, peppermint is good for respiratory support, and it's also good for headaches and nausea and stuff too, but we're using it mostly for the respiratory uh, support. And then camphor is uh, relieves spasms and it's antibacterial. It's stimulating so that your cough will produce, like get stuff up out of your lungs. <coughs> what I, what my intention for the, um, for the vapor rub is that it would be something that you could rub on your chest, um, but you could also put it on the bottoms of your feet or on older children on the bottoms of their feet. That's kind of an old remedy is to put it on the bottoms of your feet and then put socks on, put a pair of wool socks on to go to bed. Um, I did it once on my grandson to test it out. He was a little congested and. And you know, by morning he didn't have the congestions. Of course, there's no control group to know that, you know, to know if it would have maybe gotten better anyway, but it certainly did seem to take away that raspy congestion. Um, again, you know, we're not we're not doctors, but if if there's little things we can do to make ourselves more comfortable, or maybe things to try before running to a doctor, um, all the better. If we can ease the symptoms. I've done that as well, Deb. Um, uh -huh. the big on the bottom of my feet and and it does help good it's okay. helped me yeah okay i mean i would do that before you know running to get a prescription for an antibiotic or something you know um and i was kind of thinking that for the winter it might be nice to have um, vapor rub and i think even it 
again, I'm not a doctor, but I, I would think that even if you had a mild case of COVID, it wouldn't hurt because it would be the same symptoms as a cold or a virus, you know, um, with the respiratory. But if you started having real serious breathing problems, I wouldn't be messing around with, with this if, you know, you should see a doctor, but you just have to kind of know when. Okay, I think this is cooling a little bit. So we'll add a couple drops of vitamin E oil. And the vitamin E is available at like Mountain Rose Herbs, that's where we got it, but you can get that a lot of different, a lot of different places, but online if you're still using Amazon. Um, Eb, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, what would happen if you put the essential oils in when the water or your mix right there was too hot? A lot of it would evaporate and I think it would kind of, you know, like, um, like if it's too hot, you would, you would like kind of kill the healing properties of it. It would evaporate it so fast. Um, so I just let it cool enough that and I kind of go a little bit by the smell. If you put it in too soon, you can almost notice that there's hardly any smell because it was so hot. It just sort of, oh, oh yeah, okay. evaporated like, it. I don't know if evaporated is the right word. I'm trying to think, but it would like kill the properties, the healing properties. I'm trying to think like like some teas and stuff too. If you boil them, you kill the medicine like that's in that tea. But you pour, you brew it, you pour your boiled water, water over it and then steep it and you're keeping, and especially if you cover your teacup, you're keeping those essential oils in there, you know? So then mm -hmm. when you drink your lemon balm or whatever you get, you get that. So it's, it's similar to that. I mean, there are some teas that you have to boil, like the roots, dandelion yeah. roots or something, and you need to boil them to get they're stuff out. Thicker. Yeah, but your lighter things, your, what they call aerial parts, like your flowers and your leaves, those things, it's, it would like, just take the essential stuff right out of them if you, if you boiled it. So I think it's kind of like that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure there would still, if we poured it into, I'm sure there would still be some, some of it in there, but I think it, it would de decrease the effectiveness of the oils. It's not heating up very fast. I'm just putting our wax over there so, so we won't waste time after. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna put um, the essential oils in here and stir it in. So this is 50 drops of eucalyptus, excuse me, 75 drops of eucalyptus, 75 of peppermint and 50 of camphor um, to make 200 drops. I felt like camphor was the least important of the property. So I did a little bit less of that and just kind of kept it even amounts. And this is the vapor rub, right? This is for the vapor rub, yeah. Can you smell that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry guys, this is what you miss when you're not in the class. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So just the FYI, we are allowing five students, but since we've been having these classes, most everybody's been doing Zoom. Um, but if you feel like you want to come, you're more than welcome to, you know, um, and whatever you make here, you get to take home too. So um, I'm trying to work with my instructors to make sure that they have handouts. Um, some do and some don't. Um, some will tell you what they need, what you need for class and stuff. But other than that, um, yeah, it's pretty frustrating um, to have classes when everybody can't be in them. Jen, question. I have a question. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, since we're, we're on Zoom and, and we're at the class, would we be able to maybe buy uh, a tin or something of what's made? Would that be possible? That's what I was just going to ask Jen, is since you took the class, if you could come by and pick up, because we're kind of making a a batch. What do you think, Jen? Could we do yeah, that? we could do that. Okay. I mean, for pay, I wouldn't even know how to go about doing any of that. So it'd be just basically pick up. Um, uh, do you want me to put 
like a little care package together for you, Mary, and have it. Does um, security or someone come down and bring you mail? I'll be up again tomorrow for work. Oh, okay. But, okay. But, you Stop know, over. You know, if you charge, that's fine. I, you know, I think that it's well worth it. You know, even to make a, a donation or something. You know. Yeah. Um. I but, guess yeah, you know. Like I said, know. I'm willing to pay. Okay. And Mary, just so you know, too, um, I do. I make the skin salves at home, and uh -huh. I give them. I give them free to any essential workers. Oh, you do? Wow. Yeah. So when Linus goes to cardiac rehab, I'll take some and for the nurses and stuff up there. And as long as I have it in stock, it's free for anybody. Cause I feel that's the least I can do. You know, I'm home. Other people have to be out working and being exposed to things and having to use yeah. hand sanitizer and yeah. Hand, so. We're sure living in some, some challenging times. That's for sure. Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. And having these, uh, medicine classes sure have helped because um as you know you know a lot of our elders and our older folks are they don't have the money to go and bulk up on a bunch of um you know medicines at the pharmacy you know and here it's free you know that's why i wrote the grants so people can you know take them home with them and you know yeah well, that's um, so nice so kind yeah we you know we have to be good relatives one way or another now, Mary, the only thing is Jen ordered um, labels, but they're not in yet. So we'll just put a handwritten label on it for you. But okay. eventually we will be having some. She's ordered some of the, I don't know what you call them, like the things for la making labels on the computer. Yeah. Then they'll look really professional. But for this one, it'll just have to be handwritten if you're getting it tomorrow. Oh, I think that doesn't matter. The effect it'll still work yeah, it'll still good. work because yeah. it looks really nice with a good label <laughs> are you girls um all in for eight or were you at um cheyenne and kelsey i live on campus oh you live on oh you can come up here kelsey <laughs> i have a little one. Oh, okay well she wants to pick up a salve tomorrow or something. You could stop by tomorrow. I'm here until Thursday, so. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. In case you didn't <laughs> He's like, I'll show him. <laughs> Somebody mentioned me. Okay. And I live in Timberlake, so. <laughs> oh, you live in Timberlake. I don't even know anybody that goes that way from the college. Do you think you might be coming this way? Um, I don't really go that way because all my classes are online, but I do go to Mulbridge a lot. Oh, I could get them for you, Cheyenne, and you pick them up at the college here. Hey, okay. yeah, we could do that. Awesome. Thank you, um, Mary. Okay. Sure. So do you know how many need Yeah, packages? thanks, Mary. Yeah, okay. you're welcome. Just three of them. Okay. So what I did is these are the, the two ounce tins. We're using these you can get online, uh, Amazon. We I like the ones and they're probably the same thing, but I just like the consistent quality of Mountain Rose herbs. But these little, uh, these are two ounce tins and it's kind of a, a good size portion. And this two cups with the beeswax and everything in it just made 12 two ounce containers. Cool. Just so you have an idea about how far it stretches. I think I was figuring nine tins and it made um, 10 so pretty close any questions so far we're going to let this you'll start to see the edges are going to start to solidify and um and it'll it'll just make a real nice smooth surface it'll look really really professional when they come out okay so i'll put your stuff um, together, Mary and Cheyenne, and I'll put the handout um, with the, um, it'll be in a nice little brown bag, so, and the handout will be in there as well. Okay, Jan, so I'll pick them up at your, up at your office then? Yep, yep, I'll be here till okay. Thursday, yep. Okay, all right, I'll be up tomorrow afternoon. Okay, awesome. Mary, what days are you in Mulbridge? 
Uh, I'm in Mobridge all the time. <laughs> I, okay. I live at the college, so yeah, she uh, lives my there. Number, hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will stop on Monday. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> get everything ready for this next one that wax isn't melting fast enough for, <laughs> to keep it going without some downtime but it's okay so this is the oil that's calendula and um, lemon balm and this is a two cup measure so we'll add these two cups to our two ounces of wax as soon as that melts. And we could actually keep batching tonight and use this all up if we want to, so. It's starting to melt. Now, as far as finding like the properties of the different herbs and stuff, you can, um, you can go on Google and Google the herbs. And, and I usually, if I'm doing that, I'll look for more than one source that says the same thing because you never trust everything you read on the internet. But um, you might look up, you know, herbs that are good. All right, another one, another salve you might want to make is something for muscle pain or arthritis or something. Um, I haven't had as good a luck with arthritis because you got to get into the joint. And I don't think... They penetrate as well, but there are there are some ones that are good for the muscles. Um, things like uh, cayenne pepper, uh, turmeric, and um, what's another one? Comfrey is good for like kind of will be good for bones too. But anyway, you if you looked up, say you just googled and looked up um, herbs for muscle pain you know, things like that. You can usually get some ideas and then maybe just research a few of them or depending what you have available to you. Um, I think it's really neat that we can use some of the plants that grow in our backyards. For instance, plantain, dandelion are, are great plants for skin. Plantain is that one that's kind of a wide leaf, but the lines are parallel on it. The veins are parallel. We used to do froggy fiddles, I think it was when we were kids with them. I never knew what a healing, um, what a healing plant that was. It's fantastic. If you get a bee sting or a mosquito bite or something in your skin, you can just chew it, just get it kind of masticate a little bit and slap it right on um, that bug bite or whatever. And it just takes the itch right out of it and the swelling. And really, really good properties. And these things grow in our backyard. So um, it's nice to even research some of the things that grow around you. I have, I found out I had a batch of yarrow, yarrow, yarrow in my yard and it is fantastic. It stops bleeding, it just, it's very healing. It's, you need there's so many things. What? Do you need an oven there? Um, no, cause I'm just gonna add the, or I'll use it after maybe. Okay, our wax is melting. But anyway, it's kind of neat to look up the plants around your home. And as, as long as you don't have a uh, lawn service that sprays chemicals on your, on your weeds, <laughs> or if you have an empty lot that's just vacant and you can go look around, see what kind of plants are there. So many things you can get and then you can just dry them, like spread them on a, a cookie sheet. Thank you. We'll start adding the infused oil into the wax. It turned, I turned it up to medium to get the water hot enough. And then I turned it back down to low to melt it. Cause again, we don't want to um, cook the, cook the essences right out of the oil. Not after waiting a week for it to infuse. <laughs> And you started that what Wednesday? No, Tuesday. Uh, last week. Was that Tuesday? Or Wednesday? Um, well, you know what? Oh, this is another thing we can mention. Um, there was a 12th, it was started. 
it was whatever day I came up here and got this stuff, Tuesday. But, yeah. um, just, just to show whenever you make an infused oil or you do a, a medicine, always label your jars. I forgot to mention that. So this says lemon balm calendula with organic olive oil, 1, 12, 21. So I know how long that infused. Um, so it's always good to put labels on, especially if you end up doing more than one thing. You think you'll remember, but you won't. So infuse needs to be how long started and how long to sit. Okay. Um, if you can just leave it cold, like, you know, maybe like on top of your refrigerator or something like that. Uh, a couple weeks is fine. If you've got that kind of time, just let it, they call that a cold infusion. Um, but if you're in a hurry and you want to get making some medicines or you have something like the cedar that was a little harder to break down, mm -hmm. um, you could put it in that crock pot with half full of water and then just put it on just the warm setting. And then you could even just do that overnight. I know when I took the course, uh, ethnobotany course with Linda Blackbelt, she would um, start, we had three hour classes. She would just start in the beginning of class and put the stuff in the crock pot and we'd do something else. And at the end of the class, we'd go and we'd use that infused oil right then. Um, all, all we had was three hours to infuse it. But the more I've read on my own, the longer you, in, well, I mean, you don't want to infuse it for a year, but um, the longer you infuse it, the more of the properties get um, in that oil. And you can kind of tell, like I was saying before, you can kind of tell when the plants have like given up what they had because they, they sort of turn dark and set, settle to the bottom. And so when you have like that layer in the bottom where it looks oh, like dark okay, green, yeah. and, and then you have this nice oil on top, it's kind of done, you know? It's been it's, over. It's, it's gotten all the goodness out of it. The cedar took longer just because it's woody, you know, oh, okay. the cedar and the juniper. They call it juniper berries, but juniper berries are actually little tiny cones. They're, they're in the cone family rather than berries. Um, but they're also kind of woody. And so what I did is I put them in the coffee grinder just a little bit, just to kind of break them up and then put them in the jar. And so that helped to get the, I noticed it smelled even stronger this time when I opened the jar. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Can you aim at Deb, this? Do you have one of those ju juniper? Do you have one of those juniper berries oh, with you? To, to show you? No? Yes. Um, I'll get one in just yeah. a sec. Oh, I okay. think it's in this box. Can you, in the meantime, just show how that's starting to get hard, how nice it looks? See how it gelled up or wow. settled? Or... So ladies, we can make our own pharmacy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Healthier than the pharmacy. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Bring in, bring that insurance. This is the cedar. I'm looking for the berries. I thought they were there too. Um, check up there. I think there's some up in the. Juniper berries, right here. Got it. juniper berries whole. Perfect. So can, can you ladies see the cedar? Yeah. Okay. This is, um, this is what the flat cedar looks like. This comes from the West. It's Western cedar. I'm not sure about Eastern cedars if they have the same properties, but we know from people using this Western cedar, it's really good for, um, they're using it like making a tea for COVID, um, people with COVID. And I'm using it for the vapor rub. And, and I bounced it off of Linda Black Elk, my recipe, and she said it would be great. So I'm still learning, so I like to get a little confirmations where I can. Hey, juniper berries are coming up. Um, the juniper trees, they grow around here in my yard out in the country. Come this way, where's the camera? Right here, come this way. Can hey, you see so those juniper? are actually a cone, you said, rather than yeah. a berry. Wow. They're in, they look like berries though, don't they? Um, mm -hmm. The juniper tree is a form of cedar. And it's a, they tend to look really scruffy, <laughs> maybe because of the North, North or South Dakota winds. But I had a tree out in the um, country and it, it wasn't a flat cedar, but it had that cedar smell. And I found out it was juniper and it would get these berries on it, which I didn't know they were edible until I started studying 
um, herbs and plants. But you can see why, but if you kind of take them apart, there's like little, little pieces that kind of go over each other. So it's oh, like a closed, great. it's like a closed cone. Um, somebody in my ethnobotany class used these and they mashed them up and put them on meat and with horseradish and made like, cause we had to do something with wild foods. And, um, and that was really good too. So sometimes it's more than one use for the same plant, which is great because then if you're purchasing it, you can use it for other things like, like say this cedar, it's a little bit strong, but it makes a really good tea if you're congested or you have a cold or um, sometimes well, we we'll drink. We have cedar tea trees around here, don't we? I mean, yeah, but I is think that they're those more little, little, small? Little scruffy ones like? Kind of a smaller tree. Yeah. 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 They're, they're not the flat. Are those cedar, cedar like or this? not? I always thought they were. They're, they're the family of cedar, and I okay. think they're probably juniper. And that's what these berries come on. Oh, okay. And you'd have to look okay. up and read okay. the properties of juniper, but I know that this western cedar was really good for respiratory. They might all be to some so, degree. Deb, Deb I yeah. have a app on my phone that's like a plant um, app. You, you just take a picture and it's supposed to tell you what kind of plant it is. Have you ever oh. used one of those? No, that would be so neat. But somebody like me would have to yeah. have a smartphone first. I have it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have it and I, I love it. Um, so when people will say, hey, what is this? What is this? I'll say, go put this um, app on and take a picture and I'll let you know. And I think people have really went the ahead. The I um, have on Jennifer is Leaf Snap. Yeah, wow. the one I have is Picture This, I think it's called. Well, Mary, can you take a picture of your oh. um, cedar family tree and see what it says for like properties and identify it? I, I could try. What, I don't have one like close by it. What, the trees I see along the roadway and stuff. Mm -hmm. I just always thought those were cedar trees. Because I know um, my husband was asking too about what he considered to be cedar that grows around here. And I just said I didn't know if it was uh -huh. had the same property. So I was going to use what I knew. But um, that would be okay. interesting to know. But yeah, what I'll take a photo and see and I'll let you know, Deb. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and I didn't, we didn't point to it up on the board, but my, um, it's on the handout, but my email is debgrayeagle at gmail.com. And the gray eagle, it's G-R-A-Y, debgrayeagle at gmail.com. If anybody needs to uh, message me or you have questions or anything. Got it. For Mary, I'd love to have the information on the cedar that's around here. It's something because the more the more you like study plants, the more you find there is to learn. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just one of those yeah, things. It's like we never okay, learn that's... it all. Do we? Life's too short. <laughs> right. Um, okay. What I have to do is do fifty drops of each of these real quick because it's almost done. Um, Jen, do you have anything? Do you want to talk about classes coming up or anything? I don't have the schedule on you don't. Okay. Um, I post on Facebook, a poster will be going out to the staff, faculty and students. Um, it's gonna be the same Zoom link. Of course, every class starts at 5 p.m. Central, no ands, ifs or buts about it. Uh, we're on for about an hour, hour 15 minutes, but if you're in class, then you get that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we go to class till nine. But since we didn't have a class, um, we'll be done. But um, we'll get a care package together. Um, um, and Mary can pick up and then Sh Cheyenne can uh, get and so forth. Um, like I said, most of my instructors, I've asked them to put a um, list of what is needed for the class, um, what's needed for the class. But other than that, um, um, 
if they don't have one, um, you're just going to have to come to the Zoom class and get, um, just make sure you have your paper and pen so you can um, write notes and so forth. Some, some instructors are better doing that and some are, you know, like Deb, she's a teacher. She, not all my teachers are really teachers either. So I work with them and um, just have to kind of work with them too. Um, if you guys have questions, um, you know, I make sure the instructors give their email. You can visit with them. Or if you lost it, get a hold of me and I can get you in contact with them. Um, any questions? Let's see where we're at. 602. We've got a yeah. few more minutes. Um, in April or next week, I'm doing a class on mask making, if anybody's interested in that next Monday. Um, but in April, I'm going to be doing two new classes that I'm kind of excited about. One is going to be like uh, homemade natural first aid, making your own first aid kit and some things like how to make a compress or a poultice and how to stop bleeding and things like that, where you use kind of your, your herbal apothecary. And so that'll be like, a I, we don't know the name of it yet, but it'll be like first aid, making your own first natural first aid kit. And then the other one is gonna be an introduction to essential oils. I've been taking some different classes with essential oils and um, I wanna kind of, how you can use them in your family. Just, you get a few real basic things and how you can make aromatherapy Play-Doh and you can do, all kinds of stuff, you know, with your kids, um, using essential oils for making a little more health and wellness in your family. So, okay, I think we're ready to pour. Is this for this? And this, this is one is the skin sap, right? Skin sap, right? Okay. It has to pour for just a minute. So hopefully we'll get that done before class ends. There's one little wax pellet there. Looks like a zoo in here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm still on packy. Oh. I call it cold with love. Yeah. <laughs> I think it we're is. all in it. <laughs> um, one thing we can talk about, uh, we did we're not gonna get to it on the Zoom tonight, but lip balm, the only difference when you use your infused oil is you do twice the beeswax. So if you were gonna use a cup of your infused oil to make lip balms, you would use two ounces of beeswax instead of one for each cup. And that just makes it a little bit stiffer. You know how your like chapstick or your lip balm would be uh, a little bit stiffer. You don't want to, you could use, you could use a salve on your lips. Like I've used that skin salve on my lips. If I'm in the bathroom, putting it on something else, I'll just finish it do off on my lips. Lip balm? We, we didn't get, no, we didn't get lip balms, but what? Oh, we got the small tins. Yeah. The little tiny tins. So we're not gonna get to it tonight, but they the same yeah. tins, like we're using the two ounce ones for the skin salve, they make one ounce one, uh, half ounce ones that are really nice for lip balm. And you know, a cup of infused oil makes, what is it about 20 of these? I think 20 of them. Yeah. So you could like make them for all your friends and put different essential oils in them. I've been experimenting this winter and, um, I've come up with four different uh, lip balms that I really like. And I had a friend, Nicole Walker, made me um, stickers for them. And so I've got cinnamon lime, um, lavender sage, orange peppermint, and lemon tea tree. And it, they're just beautiful. Hmm. They're just beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so they're all that. different lip balms. But in other words, whatever, whatever essential oils you have, you know, just use them for different things. So whatever you guys make, um, my birthday's April. So <laughs> <laughs> I like a care package. <laughs> I don't ask for much. <laughs> so as you can see, these are, they're still warm, but they're turning solid. Mm -hmm, like the mm -hmm. salves, this is the vapor rub. And so when you go to use it, you'll just scoop some out, you know, rub it on your chest or your feet, Mary, like, <laughs> And, um, and it'll, it'll melt at skin temperature. It'll just kind of melt right in. Really nice stuff. So those are, those just need to harden just a little bit more before we cap them. And it just, I just love the way they get the nice professional top to them. And then when you get a nice fancy label or something yeah. like, like Jen's gonna make. <laughs> 
need computer skills for the for the labels. Yeah, if I this can is get so them. nice, Deb. I, I, you know, it it would be something that would, you know, really increase the knowledge of a lot of people. You know, to use things like this. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. looks like very little um, materials are needed to make a good quantity of of the salve or, you know, the um, other medication, the vapor rub thing. You know. Yeah. It, it's nice, you know, and getting back to nature, you know, mm -hmm. using what we have on this in this world to not something synthetic or anything like that. Right, right. And taking care of ourselves instead of having to run to pharmaceuticals or doctors and things. You know, there's some things you need to go to a doctor for, but a lot of little things that come up, you can take care of yourself. And those are called preventative measures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing I like about doing salves and things like this is you're using the herb and getting the properties of that into your oil, but then you're also boosting it and adding another layer with your essential oils. So you've got all that plant medicine in different forms going into your um, medicine. Okay, I'm going to add the essential oils here. This is cooled off enough. And I just, I slopped a little bit on my paper. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put a few drops of each one to try to keep that 2%. And that's because I just slopped a little bit on my hand. So this out. is the what now? I talk with my hands, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> this is the what now? This is the skin self. Skin self. Yeah. This is the, okay. This is the lavender tea tree geranium and thyme. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And we're using equal parts of each one of them. So I'm just adding a few more drops of each. Good measure. <laughs> I don't know for sure what hit the paper here, but anyway. Again, um, remember if you're doing it for kids, use a little bit less on the essential oils just because their skin is so sensitive. Um, and the other thing with essential oils is it's always good to do a, a patch test on your skin or whoever's gonna use it. And that just means taking a little bit and rubbing it where you can just check it like in 10 or 15 minutes, just to be sure you're not allergic to it. Because although I never heard of anybody that's allergic to lavender, it doesn't mean that the next person I meet isn't allergic to lavender, you know? So you always wanna um, just test it, especially on your children, if you're doing something with them. Yeah, can I ask if you ever do yeah. anything with, or like eyes here? Eyes? Um, eye drops or, or um. I haven't, um, I mean, not with essential oils or anything, um, but like black tea bags are okay mm -hmm. to put because they have like tannic acid in them. Those are safe to put on your eyes or cucumbers, things like that. Uh -huh. I, let me put it this way. I'm not a doctor, so I gotta be careful how I uh -huh. see that. I've heard of people doing those kind of folk remedies, but not, not with uh -huh. essential oils, but just with those kind of like more like foods or herbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've done cucumbers myself. Does it I had, work? I had, Does I thought it for I was, dry eyes or, um, or, or for what? I did it. I think one of the kids in my daycare had pink eye or something. And I just didn't, didn't want to have to run to the doctor right away. So I did cucumbers mm -hmm. um, for a while. And then it didn't seem like it was going away, but I only did it once. And then I tried the tea bags once the kids went home and it was uh -huh. gone by morning. It was gone by morning, but oh. I don't know for sure that I had pink eye because I didn't see a doctor for it. So was that, but it was gone. Black tea? It was gone. What? Was it store-bought oh. black tea? Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's, that's all I had then, but now uh -huh. I might try like the lemon balm yeah. or one of these other teas. I might look and see if there's one that has properties for the eyes. Because yeah. um, well, lemon balm is so good. Yeah, Mary? There, you know, I was just looking at this modern essentials uh, usage guide and it does have some recipes for eyes, different eye, um, but just to apply around the eye, not in the eye. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, that'd be so interesting to. I, oh, I'm thinking of beet balm or. What's that salve for cattle? Oh, 
Bag bomb. Bag bomb. That's like for their nipples, though, right? That's what but bag there's bomb another refers to. Sab. Isn't oh. there another sab that they have? I don't know. There's a tiger like a sab or, or something. Oh, yeah, it's like a peppermint. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, because I remember um, where I grew up, um, my foster brother, he scraped himself and <laughs> my foster mom took him out to the barn and slathered it on and called it good. And the next oh day God. it was good. <laughs> so I'm like, Huh, is that the same thing that we're making nowadays, you know? I bet it's natural kind of ingredients. Because yeah. a yeah, lot of them it, use lanolin and stuff like that, like from sheep, lanolin as a base. Uh -huh. And then that still really yeah. Use it for my nipples. But the but the crazy part, it's um and why is it so expensive when you know mm -hmm. I, I I that part I don't understand. Why is it so expensive is if it's so natural? Is it because we're such in competition with the pharmaceutical industry? You know, mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. us making all these natural foods and natural medicines. Mm -hmm. um, I was told by a, a native doctor actually said, um, hey, Jen, do you know that um, in Indian country, there's such a big movement on um, natural medicines and natural foods that um, one of his friends that works for a pharmacy said that in, in the country, they are our competition. I thought that was so cool. <laughs> I was like, heck yeah, we are. Wow. <laughs> for the doctor or for the pharmaceutical? Pharmaceutical. Wow. Their competition is in, in the country. I thought, huh? Oh, interesting. Well, do That's you remember probably... at one of our meetings, um, the uh, New Moon meetings, that pharmacist that came up and basically said something very similar to that? And actually he was recommending, you know, doing more of the natural stuff than the, even though he was yeah, a pharmacist. Just, <laughs> yeah, instead of going to, he said, cause you have, what is it? Um, Native Americans have the most, um, um, the best medicine. I mean, we really do. We, we, we surely do. Um, that's what non-natives to, you know, um, universities and colleges, they, they, they do. They, they want to know our recipes they want to know our um whole breakdown of how we make our medicines it's interesting but you know i think part of it too is i i think anyway that most native people when we make when something is made it's made with an intention and a prayer mm -hmm. and so like usually before i do medicines at home i smudge you know mm -hmm. i pray that all these things will bring healing and health to yeah. whoever uses them and maybe make up for my little incompetencies, you know, <laughs> the healing will go out. And um, then the other thing too, is that once you know um, a basic, like say how to make infused oil and how to make a salve. Now we did two kinds of salves, a vapor rub and we did a skin salve, but why couldn't you do a muscle rub or a nipple cream for nursing mothers mm -hmm. or uh, something that would maybe tailor to with the amounts and everything that would be good for baby's butts for diaper rash. You know, yeah, you just have to watch your um, the amounts of essential oils, and probably for an infant, it would be like half of uh, half. you know, whereas you would half of six will be three, right? No, well, that'd be like for a child, but then I think you'd go to half of that, like 0.5 instead of a two percent, you'd go to a 0.5. Oh, okay, um, okay. and then you want to you'd want to double check those oils and see, like lavender's probably safer for a baby. Mm -hmm. You'd want to really check them real well before you did that. Same thing with um when nipples sap. Like mm -hmm. I've seen one with calendula, which I know would be really safe with the calendula oil. Um, but for the essential oils, I'd want to check them out because anything you put on mother's nipples is going to go into baby's no. system. Yeah. yeah. System. So um, so I you know, I just I just think about all these different things that we could do with a basic recipe, you know, and just make it your own and and depending on the needs and stuff. So um, with the recipes you have on your handout, you could also do lip balm, which we didn't get to tonight, but that would be a fun thing to do too. So they're all, they start out the same way and it's just what you do with them. So I think we're gonna run out of time for this Zoom. Does anybody have any more questions? No, but I will just reading this book for the eyes because I'm starting to get some eye problems. Uh -huh. 
um, can apply this actually it's around the eyes, not in the eye, of course, or to the reflex points on your feet or ears. And it's supposed to help your vision. Was that an essential oil, Mary, that you're reading on? Uh, it, it, yeah, it's actually from the Dutera one. Uh-huh. Uh, what, what, oil, what oil were they saying? Uh, lemongrass, cypress, lemongrass. eucalyptus with two with uh, fractionated coconut oil. Okay. Yeah, you know, I was thinking there's an herb called eyebright. I'd have to look it up and find out how it got its okay. name, but I wonder if that herb, <laughs> eyebright, it's like uh, yeah. a I was listening to a that. commercial the other night. It talked about lutein and um, xanol something. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, to and talking about, you know, your, your vision, trying to help your vision. So um, uh, it's just to help, I guess. Yeah, good because like I said, my eyes are, I, I, I'm not good uh, with my eyes with the brightness, even though I had cataract surgery, the mm -hmm. light really starting to bother again. And, um, you know, just the blurriness, like I, I stare at my screen a lot. Mm -hmm. And it could be dry eyes, but I don't think I don't think it's all dry eyes that, mm -hmm. that's causing my problems. So anyway, it's just kind of looking at light. something that would help. Mm -hmm. so basically I get blue light uh, lenses. glasses. I have them for mine. Mm -hmm. And it helps a lot because I'm in ICU. What, so what is it? Remember those uh, blue light lenses? Um, they have them for reading or prescription. Um, it's supposed to help with if your longevity on um, computers or laptops or um, oh, phones really? or iPads. Uh -huh. um, that would be something to look into too. Like me in my office, you know, these. Um, what do you call them? Yeah, the fluorescent <laughs> lights. Uh -huh. In my office, I have really bad eyes myself too. And so. Um, I, I sit in the dark because I cannot handle the fluorescent light. It just plays with oh, my yeah. eyes too much. Yeah. See, see, I have the natural light bulbs rather than the fluorescent because when I, years ago, I got sick at work and that was one of the things that my friend recommended to get the natural light rather other than the fluorescent. I should have asked if but I can get some natural light. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, thank you, ladies, for attending. Oh, and Mary, you. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. And I'll I really have enjoyed the, um, it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Thank you Jennifer, for you guys are great. Thank you. See you soon. Okay, we'll see you. Bye. Bye.